Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to hang an interior door. Now this is actually a pretty simple process once you get the basics of it, but it can also be really frustrating without the right information. First I'm going to check to see if the rough opening is plumb. So when I check it this way, it is a lot out. So let's see. All right, over seven feet, it's like five eighths. So that is a lot. So we're gonna have to do something to fudge that a little. This way, we're actually looking really good. It's totally plumb, except there's just a slight bow in it. So that's nice. The next thing I'm gonna do is measure my opening to see what it is. So I have 26, 26, 26 small. So that's pretty consistent. Next, I'm going to check the floor. If I wasn't clear, I was checking the hinge side. This is the side that I'm going to start hanging the door on. Anyways, the floor. So going across here, it's not bad. In fact, it's a tiny bit high, maybe a 16th or an 8th high on this side, which is actually a good thing. That's easy. Next, I'm going to check it this way. And the reason we're checking this is to see if the floor slopes up. Because if the floor slopes up this way, then we're actually gonna to have to give the door more space underneath it to ensure that it doesn't bind as it swings outward this way. If I go for a really tight, like three eighths or quarter inch reveal along the door and the floor slopes up a lot, which is easy to do, I've seen it a lot, then it's gonna bind on this end when you start opening the door. Next, I'm gonna check my height. My height is 82, which is pretty standard and 82. Now I'm going to go outside and I'm going to check my door and we're also going to cut down the bottom of it to get a closer reveal and to make sure that it doesn't hit this. Here is our door. Let's check our measurement here. So we have just under 82 right here. So technically that could fit, but I do want to cut some off the jam to make sure that it's a little shorter. Also, I'm going to measure right here and our opening was 26. Right now, I have 25 and 5 eighths. So that means I have 3 eighths of play to fit this door into the jam, into the opening. Next, I want to get this gap smaller because nobody's going to want an inch and a quarter gap under their door. So I'm going to give them about a half an inch. A half an inch is a pretty safe space. Some people like 3 eighths. I like to give a little bit more room. So I'm putting a mark right there. Next, I'm going to square that over. Now what I'm doing is I'm going to measure from the top of the jam. So what have I got here? I have 81 and a quarter. So I'm going to write that down, 81 and a quarter. Next, I'm going to take my skill saw and I'm going to go this way because I want the base of the blade resting on here so that my cut stays nice and straight instead of going this way or that way. Now watch the crossover there with your arm, guys. Next, carefully flip it over. Now I'm going to do the exact same measurement, 81 and a quarter. And I'm doing this, I'm measuring this from the top side of the jam so that I get the exact same measurement. If I was to say measure from here, like I did on the bottom one at first, then I might not have two pieces of jam like these two uprights, the same length. But if I measure them both from the top, I'm guaranteed that these are gonna be the same length. And because the floor was reasonably level, I'm going to do them both the same length. But if the floor was a quarter inch out, then what I would be doing is I would actually be having to cut more off of the high side. Now that the door is cut, I need to make a decision on how I'm going to install this because like I said, this is really out of level. And if I install it with the wall being out of level, I'm going to show you guys what can happen. This existing door has been installed with the wall. So let's find out what happens when I just let go here. As you can see, it's got a mind of its own. So what happens basically is gravity will take the door and it won't sit where you leave it. So you got to install your door jams 
plumb. If you don't do that, then they do this, especially with a heavy door. That's a pretty obnoxious problem to have. And also, these are just hollow core doors. Once you get into solid core doors, they do it even worse. What I'm going to do is instead of lining it up flush here and having it stick out a half inch at the bottom, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna split the difference and have it be about half and half. Don't forget to remove these plugs that your door comes with. They can be different styles, but what it does is it just holds it in place for easy moving. But you definitely don't want to start trying to install the door with that in there because then you might get a screw or two in and realize you can't open the door. Next, I'm going to carefully bring this in here. Get my door open. As we can see, it fits really easily for height because we cut that off. So just looking at this, if I have the bottom flush and the door jam plumb, it sticks out 5 eighths at the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it a little bit in. So we're going to go just under a quarter inch at the top here. I have a nice sharp countersink bit. I'm going to put a screw up where the hinge is. I'm going to place a shim about an eighth of an inch in. I'm also going to prop up my door until it's plumb. Oh, there goes my other shim. Let's take a look at this. Almost plumb. A little more. That's looking good. Let's start again on this. I'm going to slide this back until I've got it just overlapping a little bit. Normally I would install it flush if it was plumb, but it is not. So it's like that. Push this out about an eighth. And that's just to give me a little bit of wiggle room. So instead of screwing it flush to this side, if this was totally plumb, I could just screw all three of the hinges tight to this wall. But because this thing has a bit of a bow in it, I'm gonna give it just a little bit of wiggle room, so one eighth. I'm putting another shim through this side. They're probably not both gonna stay in, but let's give it a shot. And now I'm ready to screw this. Double check that I have it where I want it, yep. I'm gonna hold this snug. And this is just a three inch framing screw. You could also use a trim head screw. Those leave smaller holes and you don't need to countersink so big. So it's just snug and the hinges are held there nicely. Shims, not hinges. It's hard to say the right words all the time, guys. Now that that's in, I'm gonna move down to the next hinge. I'm now putting my six foot level up here on the top hinge, which you guys can't really see. There's not a lot of space. But anyways, as we can see, in order to get plumb, this one needs to come out a bit. Pull these out a little so that I can push this door this way until it's plumb. And that is perfect right there. Countersink for another screw. Just get it set and ready to go. My next step is to get this plumb. So from this hinge down to this hinge. And this is critical that this is totally level. So it needs to go in a bit. Just giving a little tap on the bottom. There's enough friction to hold it. Now I'm going to take a couple shims, put them where the screws are. At this point, I'm going to check again. And I often actually put it right on where the hinges are. So it's perfect right now. One thing you need to know though is when you screw this in, it's not going to stay exactly where it is. It might go in like a mil or half a mil. So it's not going to stay totally plumb. So I'll sometimes push my shims in just a little bit more to give it about, you know, a half mil extra because as soon as I send the screw home, it's going to kind of crunch it in and bring it right to where I want it. Perfect. One thing I forgot to check is if my door is still plumb. This way. And it is. Good. It didn't move. And now this way, it's good. Check on those hinges again. It's good. So it's the same thing. Wash, rinse, repeat on the bottom one. At this point, this bottom leg probably isn't going to move very much or have room for adjustment this way because as long as your door jam is pretty straight, you know, as long as it's not warped stock, you shouldn't have to worry too much about it this way now. So yes, it's straight, 
and it's plumb. So now I'm going to check it this way and it needs to come out a little bit actually. Again, I'm going to put a shim where the hinge is till it's plumb. Better. Come on. Uh, there we go. There's just a bunch of friction on the bottom here. Okay. If you're not actually making a video, this process goes pretty quick, but trying to think and talk to you guys actually takes a lot more brain power than just installing a door does. Anyways, countersink. Double check everything. Plumb and straight. Plumb and straight. We're good. So the jam side, the hinge side is all done. Now you guys can see what I had to do, how I had to fudge it. So we're out a big quarter inch up there. And then it's just about flush right in the middle. And then down at the bottom here, it's a big quarter inch sticking out that way. So it's crazy when you have a wall that out of plumb what you have to do. Now comes the fun part where you guys get to see the mistake I made. So see how I gave myself a good eighth of an inch, quarter inch there? Well, guess what? Not enough space at the bottom. Whoops. All right, how do we fix that? Well, we start over. Why does there have to be fails, you guys? This was supposed to be a one and done first try video. All right, what I need to do is pull my shims. So this top should have gone tight. Okay, there's that one. I'm actually leaving the bottom fastened so I don't have to fix it for plumb, just this way. And I'm now using my four foot level because if I use my six foot, it's gonna hit the bottom one that's still fastened. And there's some drywall in the way. You know, just when you think You've got a quick, easy video. Okay, let's see what happens when we screw this one in. Because that's what we're doing now. Just seeing what happens instead of teaching. Pull this one. Get them shims out of there. Let's check it now. In a little more here. That was so tight down there, I might actually have to install this door a little bit out of square. Okay, we are looking good now. I'm just gonna leave everything. It's all solid. No shims to cut off. How lucky. Take two. Is there space to install this door? Where are we hitting? Down at the bottom again. Well, that's cool. So I guess I'm gonna get to show you guys how to move this plate over. Well, let's start by hitting this thing. And now we'll give it a screw to give it a little extra persuasion. Toe screw. Get all this excess drywall out of the way. And try and shave this down with a really dull multi-master. Well, let's see if we can salvage this video. So what I've done is I've put a shim under this side of the jam just to make sure that I have my reveal right here. So typically what you would do is you would just check your reveal. And so instead of using your level and plumbing up this side and making everything just the same way you did on that side in that time consuming way, you just go with your door jam. You eyeball your reveal and then start screwing in this side from the top down. But this one is messed up and I'm gonna have to go backwards to see if I can even get this door in this jam is also warped and twisted, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
roughly eyeball what my reveal is there and what it is here. And I'm gonna start by screwing this side in. Now how's it doing? All right, it's good along the top. It's good all the way down here. And it starts to bind somewhere, it's still good. It's just at the very bottom, it hits. So let's see what we can do about that. I am now gonna put another screw right here because this is the worst part of the binding. Worst case scenario, I may have to shave the door down a tiny bit. I am also gonna give this just a little persuasion. Something move. Snug it up just a hair. Yes! It closes. And just to give it a hair more space, I'm gonna put another screw right here down below this hinge just to tweak it a bit more. This is all becoming very unorthodox, by the way. I need it to have a little bit of room because yes, the door closes, but give it like five paint jobs and all that paint is gonna add like tiny little layers over the years and this door isn't gonna close anymore and it'll have to be changed. Of course, shaved, not changed. I mean, that'll be somebody else's problem, but still, why would I knowingly cause somebody else problems? Now let's check this reveal on this back ass words install. So that reveal is looking great. We've got a solid eighth of an inch the whole way down. So this is what we're looking for. It's just I'm doing it backwards by starting at the bottom and I've got a solid eighth down there. So we're looking great. And now what I'm gonna check for is, is the jam plumb? So what I mean is, is the top hitting first or is the bottom hitting first? And right now the whole door is hitting all the way so it's nice and solid because what can happen let's say this end is pulled this way what that will mean is that the top of the door will hit and the bottom of the door will be floating in the air and it means you'll have to push hard on this part of the door to make it close because the top will be binding and then the latch won't be making contact unless you force it closed or conversely the bottom could be making contact and the top would be sitting out like this, not flush. I can see that this whole jam is straight and the door's making perfect contact from top to bottom. So I'm actually now safe to just put a screw in here and not worry about it because this is like tight against the wall. If it wasn't tight, I would be adding shims until the reveal was perfect. So if you guys get what I mean, what you do is you'll slide it this way or this way to get that perfect 1 8 reveal I've been showing you. In this case, it just so happens to already be great. Right here. So the top actually has space, and if I just screw this home, what it's gonna do is it's gonna separate the whole jam, but it's in the position where I want it to be because that door was making contact. So now I'm finally gonna add a shim like a normal door. Okay. There we go. So now when I put this screw in, it'll stay right where I put it. Let's check this reveal again. Okay, we're still looking good all the way down there. And it's good all the way here, all the way down here. So the fact that it's doing that a tiny bit, opening a little bit, just means the hinges might be a tiny bit racked, but given what I had to deal with, it's no big deal. It's well fastened there, there, down there. We got it well fastened there. There's more screws than it needs. Normally it would only be six screws, one in each hinge location. Now we break off the hinges. Hinges, shims. 
Come on, words. Yeah, we're good. This door is ready for casing. And casing a door that you have to hang this weird is a whole other video. All right, got the handle installed. Let's make sure everything closes pretty easily. The reveal is great. So also what I mean is it's nice and solid there. It's looking good down there. Door's not racked or twisted. It's staying where we leave it. It's not opening or closing one way. So let's put it all the way this way. It's not closing at us. Put it all the way this way. And it's not opening at us. So it's good. Well, you guys, that's how you hang a door under really weird conditions. Anyways, I hope you actually got something useful. I mean, at least this side was pretty formulaic. It's this side where everything went totally haywire. I definitely hope you guys learned something in this video, found it useful, or at least entertaining. So thanks for watching, you guys. You wanna support the channel, you know, leave a thumbs up, and you can subscribe if you want to. Anyways, I've already said anyways about four times. I'm sure I've said thanks, so thanks for watching anyways. Vancouver Carpenter.